10 Shocking Things That Were Normal to Slaves and How They Faced the Unpleasant Realities of the Past. 10. Beating with a Whip. Slaveholders were frequently and viciously flogged as part of their punishment. Slaveholders employed the painful and planned practice of whipping to demonstrate authority and maintain order. Slave owners and overseers frequently resorted to beating their slaves with whips to instill fear, suppress uprisings, and further the slaves' belief in the superiority of whites. The whip sting reminded them of their servitude and caused physical pain as it sliced across their skin. There is a long and harsh history of slaves being flogged as a form of punishment. Harriet Jacobs, the author of Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl and the Narrative of Her Escape from Slavery, is one example of this that will give you chills. In her book, Jacobs relates the pain of seeing a plantation master whip one of his slaves. She noticed the blood and guts on the walls the following morning. The tale of Gordon, a slave also known as Whipped Peter, is another eerily compelling example. His back was covered in scars, a horrific testament to the innumerable lashings he had received. The horrific pain that enslaved individuals were through was permanently memorialized by these scars. The initial beatings were horrific, but that was not the end of it. Some really callous slave owners even went to extremes to ensure that their slaves suffered as long as possible. It was common practice for slave masters to reopen their slaves' wounds once they began to heal. Red pepper and turpentine were used to rub into the freshly opened wounds to increase the agony. The excruciating anguish that these treatments induce is indescribable. One proprietor reportedly used brick dust combined with grease to make a fire starter. Then he would use this concoction to rub into the wounded slave's deep wounds. Slavery's dehumanizing and oppressive flogging was a reality, even though it paled in comparison to the more severe punishments that were to come. 9. Mutilated Slaves Slaves undergoing mutilation were forced to work long hours in harsh conditions, especially in cotton fields and plantations. House servants were expected to conform to their master's aesthetic standards, which often gave an advantage to those with fairer skin or more eloquent voices. Slaves were not usually given the care and protection their bodies need. Sadly, owners frequently ordered mutilation as a form of punishment when slaves engaged in acts of resistance or when slaves fought amongst themselves. The severity of these attacks varied widely, from simple cuts and slashes to amputations, gouging, hamstring severing, and even castrations of both sexes. Those who were victimized by such heinous crimes sadly rarely got the help they needed after suffering wounds. There would be a high number of deaths due to infections, blood loss, and other potentially fatal complications. Slavery's callous disregard for its victims' humanity and health was underscored by the lack of access to medical care. 8. Brandings In this type of punishment, a slaves would be burned with a hot metal implement in this cruel ritual. The practice of branding slaves was developed to make it clear who owned each individual slave and to deter the slave's theft or sale to third parties. In order to prove ownership and deter potential claimants, large corporations frequently branded their slaves. The Code Noir legalized the practice of branding slaves as a form of punishment for escaping their owners in the state of Louisiana. By 1840, New Orleans had become the nation's largest slave market, putting many people under its harsh mandate. For slaves who attempted to flee their masters, branding became a regular form of punishment, especially in the southern states. Slaves typically had their faces scorched with a branding mark, usually a letter or other identifying symbol, so that they could not be promoted to more prestigious positions within the master's household or given access to the master's private quarters. The act of branding left an emotional and physical scar on those who were slaves. It was a sharp reminder that they were property and that running away would not be easy. On top of that, Branding served as evidence against larger corporations' claims that they had no part in such cruel practices. 7. Public Burnings One of the worst sorts of punishment that slaves had to go through was this. It's quite the spectacle to see a slave who has been falsely accused of wrongdoing chained to a stake or hung over a blazing fire. The first was to serve as a warning to the other slaves who were made to witness and were so reminded of the horrible fate that awaited them. Second, they found it amusing and enjoyable. People from the surrounding towns and plantation owners would flock to see it. The smoke and heat would cause some of the slaves to pass out or faint before the flames consumed their bodies. Six, 
The ex-slaves of Hogshead revealed horrific accounts of their treatment at the hands of their masters. Moses Roper is one such courageous person who ran out from slavery and chronicled his experiences in a book. A lot of the hardships that slaves in America faced were detailed in his book. Inflicting physical pain on their slaves was something that Moses said some slave masters enjoyed. One of the more disturbing stories he told included a slave owner and a hogshead, a big barrel. Nails were crammed into this barrel with their points aimed inward. Slaves would be coerced into these barrels by their master, who would then roll them down steep hills as other slaves looked on in horror. They were put through a humiliating and perhaps fatal ordeal while their owner and others watched from a distance as they were crammed into barrels and had nails driven into their bodies. In his tale, Moses Roper gives us a chilling peek into the depths of violence inflicted upon slaves. 5. Hovering over a stovetop In addition to Harriet Tubman, Harriet Jacobs also documented her journey out of slavery. The slave owner's wife tried to protect her, but she eventually fell into his control and was subjected to constant harassment. Harriet spent seven years hiding out in a crawl space in her grandmother's roof to escape him before finally making her way to England. That wasn't the only scary thing that happened to Harriet, though. A brutal slaveholder who had hundreds of slaves lived not far from where she was hiding. His preferred method of punishment was both excruciating and terrifying. He would bind a slave and then hang them from the ceiling while lighting a fire underneath them. Over the popping and crackling of the fire, a slab of pork fat would sizzle. The burning rat would the naked flesh of the wretched slaves, causing excruciating anguish. Their bodies were scorched and scarred by every molten drop of fat that rained down on them. 4. Demotion or Sale Punishment in Slavery there were additional forms of physical and psychological punishment used by slave owners to maintain control over their slaves. Not only did America's first president, George Washington, approve of whipping slaves who didn't perform, but he also thought they should be demoted or sold if they didn't. A slave's life may depend on whether or not they are demoted, which may not sound as bad as some of the other penalties mentioned. A slave who did not work hard enough or who did not meet the standards of their master, risked being demoted, which indicated that they would be transferred from a more lenient slave owner to a more severe one. 3. Still breathing after being smoked Some slave-owning countries eventually passed legislation meant to secure the safety and liberties of their slaves. These rules were supposed to protect slaves from mistreatment, but they were rarely enforced. Various cruel customs spread from state to state. The story of fugitive slave William W. Brown is particularly frightening. He told the world about a horrible custom widely practiced in the Old Dominion state. One may easily conjure up a scenario in which a slave master bound his captives and led them to a smokehouse. The slave's pain was compounded by the fact that they were whipped inside. The brutal treatment, however, continued. Next, the proprietor would light a fire with the tobacco stems, filling the space with dense smoke. As an added form of punishment, the slaves would be made to breathe in this toxic cloud. Imagine the terror and suffering these slaves went through. In addition to being chained and lashed, they were also forced to fight for air in the suffocating conditions. It's difficult to conceptualize the callousness and indifference to human life that pervaded society at the time. Despite the existence of laws designed to safeguard slaves, these punishments nevertheless occurred, which is even more startling. Owners were able to commit horrible deeds because they knew they wouldn't be held accountable for them. Writings by William W. Brown illustrate the brutal reality of slave life and serve as a poignant reminder of the great pain that people had to go through. Are you enjoying this video so far? Have you subscribed yet? Be sure to do so for more thrilling content. 2. Long-Term Chaining This was an awful fact of slavery's past that caused much suffering. Slaves were forced to endure terrible conditions as a result of their use to confine and control their captors. Slave ships were the first to utilize these shackles to confine Africans in overcrowded, suffocating conditions. Slaves who escaped were often punished by being chained up for a very long time. They were restrained by chains either to their workstations or to one another. 1. Forced Reproduction Slaves Slaves endured horrible treatment, including filth and sexual harassment. It's shocking that no legislation existed to safeguard them from mistreatment like this. Pregnancies resulting from these atrocities 
were often met with indifference or even hostility from medical professionals. The spouses of their owners often treated them worse than the slaves themselves. Slaves of both sexes endured hardships. Their proprietors exploited them any way they saw fit, which sometimes included forcing them to sleep with multiple women at once. It was exploitation that caused them even more suffering. A legislation prohibiting the importing of slaves into the United States was enacted in 1808. Slaves in the South became scarce as a result. Thus, there was a greater need for black people generally, and for those who were childbearing capable specifically. Slaves overcame insurmountable odds and persevered in spite of terrible conditions.